Welcome back to another battle report here on Tried and True. Our players today will be facing off using the 2021-2022 Steamroller Rules Scenario 1 King of the Hill. Let's meet our players for today's matchup. Returning to the channel is our Kador enthusiast Dan, and he has brought a 75 point army of Armored Core. Please tell us about your army, list composition, and thoughts going in today's battle. Hey everyone, today I brought my most uh, successful caster in Vlad 2. Um, let's go through the highlights in the list. Behemoth is at 20 points now, it's an absolute steal. Marauder is an excellent jack target for Vlad's upkeep spell, Sail, and Greylord Adjunct anchors the list and keeps Vlad, Vlad's upkeep costs very low. Kel Balok and the Chaos Eliminators are my Merc options here. Kel's a great gun platform, and he can snipe shots off of models that are just a bit too hard to kill. Kazi Eliminators are excellent contesting uh, miniatures, and they take Vlad 2's feet extremely well. Um, for the core of the list, we have two units uh, of the Mana War. We have the Demo Core, and we have a minimum unit of Shock Troopers, both with an attachment. We also have four tankers, two suppression tankers, two strike tankers. There are two dracoons, there are, and there is one Kovnik and two units of mechanics. The mechanics are here to help bodge up the list as we march up the field and to cap scenario points. Having a second unit of mechanics is something that I feel lends a lot of flexibility to the list. Just one unit is just never enough. Introducing for the first time on the channel is longtime community member and Ice House veteran Hoy. He is playing a 75 point army of Convergence. Please introduce yourself and talk to us about who you brought today. Uh, so today I brought Father Lucan in Clockwork Legions. I'm actually running a different uh, list than I normally would for Father Lucan in Clockwork Legions. Uh, I'm not running him with any of his normal heavy infantry, which he does love. Instead, I decided to go with, more with solos and just try to use him for the uh, his striking power with his his couple of his spells there, uh, especially with his positive charge that he can go and put down on his jacks. So my list contains Father Lucan running a Prime Axum. Uh, the Prime Axum is great when he's able to throw out the Servitor every turn, and two Conservators who can use that Servitor when it, it dies to get its Hand of Destruction up to get its map and power up on their attacks, and Inverter for its auto knockdown, uh, especially with Watcher on Father Lucan, and a Corollary in order to move the focus around for my jacks. I'm running James. Uh, she is a very good sideline solo, especially with Blade Shield, defense 14, so she can get up the field, has a prey target, and Grievous Wounds. I'm running one of the um, ADOs, which allows me to move my focus around a little bit farther than a normal in Convergence. Destructicon 3000 for his knockdown and slam on his guns. Widget, uh, Math Leap, Archaeologist. Because I found that, especially into War Machine, she does extremely well against Warjax, since her Archaeologist allows her to pick a side of the board, and she has plus two to attack and plus two damage on models that are in that on that side of the board. Asphyxius and an Optifex Directive. Can the Dark Champion Vlad withstand an onslaught from the Divine Architect alongside his army of Warjax? Let's get to the table and roll off. Okay, so we have Kador turn one here, and uh, one of the theme benefits of Armored Core is advanced move on units and tanker solos. So that's what we're doing here at the start of the turn. Uh, as soon as that's finished up, we are going to work on our focus allocation. Um, so first turn's pretty easy for Kador. Generally, we don't allocate anything. Um, but at this point, we've already gotten all the tankers and the units advanced. So um, I'm going to move into, so there's no focus allocation, I'm going to move into my activations. Uh, Kel Balak is going to take uh, the first activation, we're just going to run him up to the forest and kind of set up his gun for later in the game. Um, nothing's in threat right now, so it's uh, definitely too far to shoot at anything. <clears throat> uh, all jacks power up, they run, um, are, they are eventually going to just run up and get in place up the field. 
Um, early on in the turn, I measured out to make sure that the Eliminators were out of threat range of his Stalker when they decided to, ran, to run up on the uh, bottom side of the screen and get in place to uh, do some work in that zone later in the game. <clears throat> Vlad's going to activate early this turn, and he is going to um, he's going to move up into a uh, position a couple inches from the starting line. He is going to cast his upkeep spells out, and he typically dumps almost all his focus on the first turn whenever I play him. Uh, we put a sail onto the Marauder, we put Hand of Fate onto the Behemoth, and we put Arcane Might onto Vlad himself. The rest of the turn is going to be mostly me checking for threat ranges from my opponent and getting my miniatures into position. <clears throat> the goal in this game, in this matchup right now, is to grab up as much real estate as possible, uh, as quickly as possible. I want to be up and across the board um, at by the end of the second turn, at the latest. I want to put the pressure on my opponent to make sure that he cannot approach the scenario in an effective way. And if I can jam him out of his ability to get into the game, get into the zones, I can press that advantage and ride that to victory. That being the strategy in this game, you're going to see me spend a hell of a lot of time being very precise in the early turns of the game. Um, I want to make sure that those turns go right because I'm going to either win or lose this game on the backs of my setup. To end the turn, um, we're going to eventually see the Shock Troopers move up using their advanced, uh, their new Shield Wall order that they got in the November update. Uh, they get to move an extra set of inches um, when they Shield Wall order. Let's see. Uh, the Kovnik Desperate Pace things, um, Atanas uses heroic call and the dragons run. So that moves on to my turn one. I'm going to put out a reflex servitor. It has a counter charge and uh, explodes when it attacks a model. So I'm going to put that out and I'm going to allocate one focus out to my my uh, warjack since convergence warjacks do not power up. So I need to put at least one focus out in order to move that focus around to my jacks uh, through the induction node so I can actually move my, my models. Uh, so I'm going to just run my jacks up. I'm going to try to press and get into those scenarios before he can lock me out of them. Um, so I'm gonna try to move up my models. I'm gonna put my reflex servitor right before the forest so he can't just attack it outside of the forest and try to move it so I can counter charge someone who comes through the forest. And then run up my prime axiom to get him into the zone to start contesting that zone. Uh, I'm going to move that focus on over and start trying to run my other jacks on up up the table as well and try to get them in position for the next turn. Uh, getting into a trench with my heavy war jack there in order to make it so he doesn't get just shot off the board uh, turn, turn one. I'm then going to move uh, my solos on up trying to keep, keep them close to where I believe my caster in my control range of my caster for when I cast my deceleration spell in order to give him an armor buff and uh, just try to get up the board. I do move uh, Widget on. Her archaeologist zone is the bottom half of the screen here. So I'm going to attack his dragoon there and try to see if I can do some damage to it and maybe get a servitor out. So I do end up hitting his Dragoon and actually doing six points of damage to it, uh, which was a very good roll for Ray, and putting on another Reflex server just to try to jam his, uh, his models so that way I can try to get up the board a little bit more on my turn. Uh, I'm, she then repos back, and I'm going to move with my Corollary. It gains one from its Accumulator, starting within three inches of my caster. I move... Ex Asphyxius up with his Annihilation Servitors to try to just get in position for next turn in order to try to move in and start contesting. I do cast two clouds here to try to block some line of sight so I don't get a ch charged right on my uh, on some of my jacks and leave, try to leave it open for me to get into into some positions next turn. I go with Father Lucan. Um, I asked to see how many shots can go into my Prime Axiom and how many models can get in there. Uh, I start fearing that he might do quite a bit of damage to my Prime Axiom this turn. So I decide to feat with Father Lucan, which increases my armor by four. And I will cast Watcher for three and Deceleration for three, 
which will give me, which will actually make it so I don't have any focus on my caster, but will increase my armor against shooting by six. And I put my mechanics in right behind, right behind um, my prime axiom because I think you'll be safe. They'll be safe there. Okay, what the hell, widget? Uh, six damage on a dracoon? Way too much. Um, I had not approached the game fearing this miniature, but I kind of do now. Um, anyway, we get started with our turn two. We have 50 minutes on the clock, and this is about the point in the game where Kador asks the opponent, would you like grape or strawberry jam? Um, at the start of the turn, Vlad upkeeps two spells for free. One, because of he his great power, and two, because he has the Greylord adjunct available. Um, so I'm only paying one for my total of three upkeep spells, but you know, I might as well have dropped Hand of Fate because I don't recall actually remembering to use it this game on the Behemoth. Unfortunate. Uh, anyway, we always allocate one to Behemoth, and we move on with the rest of our turn. Uh, I don't think the Marauder gets any focus this turn. So I'm going to spend a lot of time here discussing a lot of numbers with my opponent, what things look like under Vlad II's feet, and I'd like to take a minute to take to talk about uh, our Lord and Savior, Vlad II, and his feet, because it is amazing. Um, so, uh, if, for those that do not know, Vlad II will feet and roll a d6 and gets d3 plus 3 miniatures. They must be non-character, they must be warriors, but they all get effectively plus 3 to all of their stats. Uh, this feat is so flexible because if you need damage, it gives you damage. If you need accuracy, it gives you accuracy. And it gives you accuracy in ranged or melee. And um, one of the most important things about it is that bonus to speed. So you've got, you know, 14 inches of threat from your reach models in the Mana War uh, medium based troopers. You've also got the Drakens that threaten about 15 inches if they were to charge. Uh, and even further, if these models all just decide to say, hey, forget it, I have plus three speed this turn, I'm going to run and just be in your face. Um, at this point in the game, that's a lot of what we're doing. So primarily, I said my goal was to jam my opponent out of the zone. So killing things under Vlad's feet while going into Lukant's feet is not the main goal here. We want to make sure that we deny board presence as much as possible. Anything, any damage I can get through this turn is gravy. I do a lot of pre-measuring here, and I'm going to work out the activation order before I actually do anything. So that's why there's a lot of time spent in the start of this turn without anything moving. Um, I also realize that in this matchup, there's really not much for the suppression tankers to prey on. Uh, they really want to be shooting at light infantry, and they're going to want to just jam things up at this point. Uh, there's no light infantry, so they are just jamming. Vlad who walks forward and he feats. I rolled the maximum number of models, so I have six tokens to allocate. And we are going to put them onto three Democor at the top of the screen, uh, both of the Draken miniatures, and one suppression tanker near the south at the bottom of the screen. Um, now, I did a lot of talking with my opponent, and we discussed what it looks like if I can free up my Draken in the bottom part of the circle zone and put a charge into Lucan. Um, it should do some damage. And I recall that he has Watcher, so I ask about the accuracy of his jack and what he can do to prevent this. And it turns out, if my math is right, the Draken might survive on an average damage roll, but he's going to be really banged up. He might have like one, two, or three boxes left. Uh, however, we make a very big mistake this turn and forget that Widget cranked a damage roll on that Draken, and he's not at full health when he goes in. So... That's going to be a dead dragon. That's unfortunate. Um, but that's okay, because we have other plans to uh, get up the board and score points and deny my opponent the ability to get in there. So, at this point in the turn, we are concentrating on doing things in the right order. We're going to start by moving the shock troopers up as our first attempt to unjam the dragon and to uh, kill that servitor. They should have, they have mat 7, which makes them fairly accurate, and that servitor should probably die even if it's under Lacan's feet. A part of the unit is going to use the extra inches from the shield wall order, a part of the unit is going to make attacks, and that's kind of why they break their formation a bit this turn, but they still all are benefiting from shield wall, which is what we need. Um, next up, we're going to be moving up the, um, we're going to be deciding on how to engage here. 
and we plot out a landing spot, make sure we can get past the forest, and do a couple other measurements. Before I send in the Draken, I try to send in this uh, suppression tanker that I feed it on. I figured it's going to be a tanky boy, it's going to sit there in LeConte's face, and it's going to really make my opponent sweat. And um, after watching the battle report recording, I feel like I may have accidentally moved him through a shock trooper, thinking that he was in range of a Tannis's, um tactician bubble within the 12-inch command range of my Atanas and standard bearer unit. I didn't measure it at the time, so I can't tell from the recording after the fact, but, uh, you know, sitting here being hindsight 2020, you know, there's a lot going on in a game of War Machine, so you just kind of have to move past it and, and move on. Um, yeah, n neither my opponent nor myself caught it at the time, and I can't be sure if it was even in or out of range, so, yeah. In goes the tanker, we run. We get corroded through the clouds, and we bulldoze that jack ever so slowly back, and it bumps into Widget. Um, that was just gravy, so it's sitting there. Uh, it has defense, thir defense 12 and armor 24 under Vlad's feet, so long as there's no chain weapons involved. But wait, my opponent has a chain weapon. Oh well. Draken goes in, lands at the landing spot, we get a watcher trigger, and it is going to dismount him because I looked down at the card when I went to mark damage, and I'm like, oh, right, there's six marks, six boxes of damage marked off already. Great. <laughs> yeah, what a, what a waste. Um, that's okay. Even dismounted, he's still going to be a def 13 and armor 21 uh, speed bump there. And, you know, God help him, if he walks away, he takes a weapon master free strike. So, whew. Um, Next, up, next part of the turn, we're moving up uh, Tannis and Standard Bearer. We're going to put the, um, the tough call, the heroic call, onto the Demo Corps. And the Demo Corps are going to pop their mini feet for Sanguine Bond. We're going to send them downfield. Under Vlad's feet, the Demo Corps threatened 14 inches, which is super respectable for medium base infantry that hit like a truck. They come in swinging at power strength 19. And the idea here is that we're going to follow up with the second half of the unit that did not get feeded. They're just going to run into position to make sure that uh, Dragos Dragadovich, uh, the unit attachment, can get everyone in his command range. The three demo core with the feet on them go up to mat 10, power strength 19. We take a swing on James and do three whole damage. Wow. <laughs> Insane. Um, and then we're going to take a swing at Destructotron, we remove him handily, and we also, I believe, crank out a uh, crit stationary roll onto the jack there, and we get a Weapon Master swing in. I think it deals, uh, it, I think it deals 14 damage, yeah. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Next, we're going to follow up, and we're going to run my jack into this zone. Just put his, his uh, right foot in the zone. That way, he's going to pick up a control point if my opponent cannot move a miniature into that zone on their turn. I just killed, or I just occupied one solo, and I killed another. And I've half crippled this jack, so I'm feeling pretty good about the fact that I'm eliminating his contesting pieces in the north part of this game. Uh, I just have to keep up that pressure and hold the line. Now we're going to run up um, and charge the Prime Axiom with our Draken, which I said threatens 15 inches. And I'm definitely sure that these guys are all within um, all within a Tannis's uh, tactician range, so we can fa safely move past them. We check laser line to make sure that we can get past the forest and everywhere that we need to get, uh, and there's otherwise a clear charge lane. And after sending this Draken in, he charges the Prime Axiom, and I think he deals one damage, which is, uh, well, underwhelming, to say the least. Finally, as part of this turn, we're going to start moving up our Strike Tankers, and they're going to shoot at the Prime Axiom and make sure that they can test the, uh, the middle zone. Oh, I, f I did forget to mention that the uh, Draken is going to reposition and jam even harder. Here come the strike tankers. I did counter. I did counter charge the Draken earlier too, which is why my reflex servitor is now gone. Right. Um, th yes, that's correct. Uh, I don't think it dealt any no, damage. It didn't do anything. Um, 
Now, the uh, Strike Tankers are moving up and they're taking shots at the Prime Axiom. And this is good for them because while their Grievous Wounds on their ranged attack is not going to apply, uh, their Siege Weapon for the additional die against huge bases certainly will. We're going to follow up that and we're going to put a proxy base out so that uh, my Behemoth Miniature can sit comfortably next to the Shock Troopers. So it's actually in the position of the proxy base. Um, and I have to you know, put the miniature a couple inches back. Uh, Behemoth is a champ here. We take two shots at Lucant just to put out some damage, and they end up getting two perfect drifts right onto the heads of the mechanics, which are hugging the Prime Axiom. I think we ran the numbers on this, and even though I forgot Hand of Fate, uh, there's a lot of dead mechanics here. It's about 10% uh, to kill one of these guys under Lucant's feet, and Behemoth kills all of them. It would have gone up to 17% if I remembered Hand of Fate, but I did not. Um, anyway, here we are, finishing the turn by having our mechanics run. In these guys are going to run into the center zone, um, just uh, and just kind of get up in, in position behind my miniatures, uh, hoping to heal them up next turn. 24 minutes on the clock to end. Yep. And so now it's over my turn. I'm going to put out an attunement servitor. Uh, it's one that it can attack, make flare to make it so it's easier for me to hit models. Uh, I am going to go ahead and allocate one over to the conservator that had got crit stationary or not stationary. Um, who? What was it? Was a crit station? It was crit stationary. Thing. Okay, so crit there was stationary. A and then, that was crit stationary. Uh, shake that. And a good convergence army is like a Rube Goldberg machine. Then I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to try to clear some of this out. He's got models already into me. Uh, he's jamming me away from getting any scenario play in. And I'm just trying to figure out exactly where to go and which models to be with. With convergence, you have to think a lot with your what models go first because you have to move the, that focus around to each of your each of your jacks since we do, do not get uh, power up. So, and and I do make a couple mistakes in, in this uh, in this game here. Uh, one will be coming up when I move Father Lucant first, and not the corollary. So I do not get the accumulator, the extra one focus. So I end up only with two focus instead of three moving around the around the field for me. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to put Father Lucan. I'm going to try to move him up to get him into that trench up there uh, next to his dismounted uh, Dragoon. Uh, I do find that his dismounted Dragoon actually keeps me slightly out of the trench. So uh, I'm going to go and put positive charge on my Conservator as well as the Prime Axiom and then move Father Lucan up. He has one focus on him uh, and I am going to upkeep Watcher. So the the positive charge gives me plus two to hit and plus two damage on my melee attacks with for models within three inches of those warjacks. So then I go with Father Lucan, try to hit your dragoon, missing. And then I go kind of back in the tank, um, hoping that I, I was hoping to do a little bit more in that very beginning. Uh, and I noticed that my corollary is now outside of the three inches, so I move my corollary up and then I move the focus on over to my inverter to see if I can clear away some of his models here. Um, I then go and use my my chain weapon to remove the, the Dragoon and see about buying an attack and doing some damage onto his uh, suppression tanker or his tanker there. Moving the focus on over to my Prime Axiom and doing it quite a bit of damage to his tanker, but I'm leaving it, I left, left it on two, two boxes at, by the end of the attacks. Um, I then move on over to my Prime Axiom. Uh, I'm gonna end up actually shooting with my Prime Axiom. And First, I move the attunement servitor in range to hit his other dragoon there. I'm just moving up so that way, since it most likely won't hit, I'm just trying to make it so the drift won't move away from his actual model. I do miss, but the flare does hit 
his model as well as the prime axiom so prime axiom oh no his defense is now five so very hard to hit for people and the reason i'm trying to get the flare on there is i'm actually going to be shooting with the prime axiom not using my melee attack and since convergence goes off the mat and the rat of the caster itself my rat is actually only three so i don't have much to hit with this um, my fix for that is actually Destructicon 3000, which he took out on the on his second turn. So I no longer have my uh, slams and my knockdowns. So I'm going to end up just going and starting to uh, use my Excel Spiker. It has five shots, and I'm just going to try to do a little bit of damage. Uh, I'm going to shoot at the Marauder and only do, I believe, one point of damage to him uh, through all five of the shots. I then will boost a uh, harpoon into uh, into his dragoon just to make it so I do the auto one damage and that allows me to actually buy or get a free melee attack and then buy additional melee attacks. So I go, I boost it to hit, moving that focus on over to the other conservator on the far side. I do hit doing the one one point of damage and allowing me to, to start attacking it with a melee weapon. We do see if I could shoot with another harpoon on the other side, uh, but I do miss with that harpoon. And then I start trying to hit with a, a power 23 weapon, which is straight dice, I believe, on because of Vlad's feet. Uh, I'm not actually able to take him out with my prime axiom. So I will end up having to move the conservator over to see about trying to finish him off. Uh, so I'm not taking as many things out as I wanted to early on in this turn. And it's getting really concerning for me because I'm having a lot of trouble about how I'm going to actually get into these zones and actually start contesting. So I did actually dismount him and then the conservator, I'm trying to measure out to with the ADO behind that one conservator, I can actually induct nine inches away. So I'm gonna go and try to move that focus from that conservator all the way over to my corollary. So I'll have it for next turn. So that way I'll be set up for next turn. So I go, I attack with the conservator. After rolling a couple of dice, I do end up, um, I would say, I made two initial attacks and then noticed that one of its arms were crippled. So I just dropped the focus that I would have had to spend in order to make it two, two dice and just end that turn, uh, end his activation. I then try to figure out what I'm going to be doing with James. And I had two options here, either go and contest, uh, which is, would have been the better option, or actually do something with James and try to see about taking out one of his tankers there. Um, I just remember when the tankers were first coming out, I was very scared of them. So I haven't actually played against one of them before. So I wasn't sure exactly what it could do to me. So I wanted to get rid of it. And I ended up going in there, making sure that uh, James was in my positive charge range to get that plus two damage and plus two mat and seeing about taking out his, uh, his tanker there. That was the prey target too, right? Yeah, that was his her prey target as well, correct. Correct. So she has a good chance to do some damage to the prey tar uh, to to him. So she ends up actually killing it. Uh, then we're gonna actually try to move her up just to get in the way with her uh, sidestep ability. The last conservator who didn't have any focus is just gonna try to get rid of your other suppression tanker and leave it on one hitbox. I'm now left with just Gatsby and his units and the stalker. So I take one of the his annihilation servitors and tries to charge the the tanker to, because they do auto one damage. So if I hit, then I can just take take it off the board and actually gain its soul. Move Gatsby behind the wall. I keep knocking over my own models and keep having to try to put them back up. Need to put some weights under there. 
So I end up missing with the Annihilation Servitor. So I end up leaving your, your Suppression Tanker there. Um, I, I'm contesting the zone now at least with two of my Servitors there. And then I'm going to move up my Stalker just to get... Just to see if I can actually do some damage to your Colossi Eliminator by just moving it up and then doing the, the Boundless Leap to, to get into range of as well as contest the contest the zone. So I move up and then I found the sleep. Yeah, I think if you actually take out that eliminate uh, that Kazi, you score that zone because I don't think the Mana Wars toes quite got there. Yeah, and I was trying to the score that zone to keep me in this in the fight, but I miss both attacks and uh, the only one I have left is Widget. Widget flies over. It says, oh, let's see what we can do against the Behemoth, because the Behemoth just took out my whole support team back there, and crank some damage on the Behemoth. Um, Widget is definitely being my MVP this match. And with Was hitting... Unreal is what, another five or six damage to Behemoth? Yep. And the, yeah, it does a decent amount of damage to the Behemoth, and then I get to place a Servitor when Widget is under Convergence. So I place an Elimination Servitor, which is just does auto one damage. It can attack the, the turn it comes in, but I'm moving it into the backfield just to get in the way and then move it back on over to you. So we've got turn three, and it's 24 minutes on the clock, so we're starting to sweat. We have the same upkeep strategy as before, so we're going to upkeep all three spells, but only pay one focus for all three of them. Um, most of the time, I really like to try to keep as much focus as possible on Vlad and allocate as minimum focus as, po as I can uh, to save focus for Arcane Might, boost to hit, boost to damage uh, later in the game. But sometimes you just have to know when it's time to go all in, and this was one of those turns. I thought that if I can take out the Prime Axiom this turn, I was going to be in good shape. But there were a couple things that I needed to do to facilitate that and make it happen. Starting the turn, we remove our feet tokens and we roll for Corrosion. And Corrosion goes out on that tanker, so it's alive on one box. We allocate one focus to Behemoth, because you always allocate one focus to Behemoth. We allocate two focus to the Marauder, so it's got a full load. And I'm still up keeping a sail, so that guy's going to charge for free. But there's a James in the way. So... Starting off with the turn, we're going to do the easy stuff first, and um, well, we're going to we're going to talk about threat ranges. We're going to talk about numbers, and we're going to pre-plan our turn for quite a while here. But generally speaking, uh, we're going to clean up our backfield with this adjunct here. We move forward, do a spray, just to make sure he's kind of still relevant in the game, um, and maybe he needs to contest something later. That's a servitor dead. That's good. Um, my next goal is to repair my behemoth. So I am just going to move up three mechanics and peel off all the damage that um, James did. Uh, not James, uh, that uh, Widget did, the archaeologist. And in this case, um, there was also some chip damage on my Marauder, so I moved up one mechanic in order to get uh, that damage off, and then I had the rest of the mechanics follow up and just kind of put their toes in the circle zone. Just in case I managed to clear it out, I wanted to make sure I had a unit there to score. And I knew Vlad wasn't able to get, wasn't going to be able to get far enough forward. Um, I should mention that one of the theme benefits of Armor Core is that whenever you repair something, you repair one additional damage box. So those three mechanics on the bottom of the screen were handily able to repair uh, Behemoth. Next part of the plan is we're going to clear out James. So we're going to use the Mana War unit, uh, the Demo Core, we're going to move them up and they're going to uh, do what they do and they're going to be the cleanup crew after I have jammed my opponent up with my earlier models. Um, the Democor in the back are able to clean up James without uh, much of a scratch or without much of an issue. And then the Democor up the top are going to do the best they can to try and clear more miniatures there. And I think we do end up clearing that uh, Conservator Jack. <clears throat> so um, now we've cleared that lane and we've planned out uh, a landing spot for a Marauder. Uh, so we're just going to make sure that we can get the Marauder there, there's a clear lane, and because he doesn't benefit from Tactician, we want to make sure that we can easily move past everything. Um, first things first, we move up the Man of War, a Tannis and Standard Bearer, and he's got an excellent hand cannon. He's just Rat 6 base, he's just an incredible 5 point unit. He's like that Scorn tie common Standard Bearer, great stuff. Um, I love that unit and they always reward me. 
let's send in the Marauder. Um, I did the math, and even with a full load of focus and a free charge, I don't think Marauder is going to completely scrap this Colossal. But after I'd already put in some chip damage that was not able to be repaired, uh, I felt that the damage was a bit underwhelming from this miniature, but that's okay. By the end of it, uh, we're going to see that the Prime Axiom gets left on 11 boxes, I believe. So what's the plan to finish that thing off? we got to kill it. It cannot be allowed to activate it again. Um, we've got Strike Tankers. They're going to move up. They're going to take a chunk out of it. Um, and we have a Behemoth that's going to put shots into it. So I'm feeling pretty good about dealing the 11 boxes worth of damage. Um, and I believe that's going to be uh, coming up later in the turn. My other goals for the turn were to, since I knew I had to pull the Marauder forward and couldn't use it to control the north zone anymore, I wanted to make sure that I could score points somewhere else so I could keep the count going and that way I could keep the pressure up. I should note, since that is the top of three, when my Marauder started in the north zone, it scored me a scenario point because my opponent did not have any miniatures there to contest it. So we walked away from a free point to put that much damage on a Colossal. I think it was a worthwhile investment in this case. Yep. I just wanted to take a note that I did shield guard one of your shots, since all of my Warjacks have shield guard in with Father Lucan. Yeah, that's a good thing to note, because it was worrying me. I was like, I can't put these shots 100% where I want them. Something's going to get shield guarded. So mm, that's when I started to sweat about uh, being able to actually kill the Prime Axiom. So... Um, in order to make sure that I wasn't getting too tilted about that, I decided to go and activate the Kazi Eliminators and move on to something else. Um, prior to that, I moved Vlad into position so that I could get the Arcane Might radius from his control range of 14 inches over to where the Kazi were standing so they could put some damage into this Light Jack. I know that the Stalker's super scary. Uh, it has Grievous Wounds. It's just got a whole bunch of rules that I do not like, and as much damage as I can put on that thing as possible, the better. Their damage is a bit underwhelming in this case. I think I missed an attack on double ones, um, and I just didn't quite get as much in as I had thought I wanted to. We're going to advance with the Shock Troopers again. Always Shield Wall, man. They are so good in Shield Wall, but the second they break that Shield Wall, they crumple like crazy. So we get a Shield Wall advance. We're going to see a couple of the Shock Troopers work on clearing that, um, that Servitor solo or part of Gatsby's unit, I believe. And the rest are going to take their swings onto the objective. They have Reach Weapons. And they're going to end up putting, I think I remember it being about 9 damage on the objective, all totaled. Um, after that, I'm going to take a swing on the Light Jack with the one Manor War that was not able to get there, and I don't even think he hits. I decided to advance Behemoth and put his toes into the zone. I think this is a bit of a mistake. I don't think he needed to be that far forward. We already can't clear that Stalker, so we're not scoring the zone. Behemoth takes shots at Prime Axiom, and he's going to put some damage. Um, again, it's kind of underwhelming damage. It didn't roll high enough, and I, um, you know, I'm just uh, I'm beginning to feel the uh, burnout from the clock because we're getting down to seven minutes. Um, but finally, I killed it with Kel Balak. Yay! Your turn. Yep. So uh, I'm very worried. He's gone up on scenario quite a bit on me. I can't move his. Uh, models out of the way i still have the suppression tanker uh in my face and i'm looking at my board and i'm like okay i've got my annihilation servitor there he can do auto one damage on attack but i sort of panic here um unfortunately and i end up using my after talking it out thinking about what i'm going to do i end up going with my inverter there my heavy inverter and using a power 20 attack just to remove one box from a model so that ended up uh, not being very good because I couldn't move him into the zone or contested anything, but at least I got that model away from me and I felt a little bit better on that, um, though I wasn't, wasn't doing too well. I did notice that one of my Annihilation servitors was actually out of my control, uh, my command. Uh, so uh, the one that is off the screen is currently out of command. And so I'm just trying to figure out what I can move in to contest and what I can actually do here. So this is where my inverter goes and ends up taking out his suppression tanker, uh, wasting my heavy activation to take out a single box. And I'm still trying to, I noticed I kind of made a mistake since my, my one servitor is still right there. And so I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with the rest of it. I decided to go with widget and shoot the behemoth again. 
um, cranking damage on the behemoth, just doing what Widget loves to do, and placing down her server. Uh, I don't think she got four sixes. Yeah, you rolled four sixes, right? Yeah, that was Gatsby later. <laughs> um, between Gatsby and Widget, they just... They they do some work on this turn. I place down a servitor behind the behemoth and just move him in front of the suppression tanker just to get into that zone and start con and just con add one more model to contest. Uh, I know it probably won't live, but I just need to get as many things contesting as possible to see if I can just hold out. And I see that his clock's low, so I'm just trying to see if I can, at this point, get enough in there, keep alive, and see if I can contest. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out moving over the, the focus. I realized that just going and sending the focus over to, to my uh, conservator wouldn't work because I wouldn't be able to get him in. So I end up moving my corollary up and attacking my warcaster to move my focus on over to the over to my conservator. Um, it's a just a little trick to use in order to get things focused to go where you want it. And it actually gives you a little bit farther range. So that way my uh, corollary is actually in the uh, towing the zone there and just a, another model to try to contest. I then run my ADO on over and get him into the into the upper zone just to contest up there and now I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to actually do with my uh, Gatsby unit. So I charge in charge in and I find that there's actually a really good landing spot for me and I, that I can actually get to the behemoth with Gatsby. So I go and I put him up there and I start going to town on Gatsby here or with Gatsby um, doing some heavy damage into the behemoth. I do miss with yeah that's where the quad yeah six that's where the quad sixes come <laughs> up because I had like a quad six and then I had three sixes it was a lot of dice right in a row of just damage. Actually, I think you might be right with the quad sixes on on um, Widget, but I did do a lot of sixes on this attack and was very happy with how much damage he was <laughs> able to put out. Uh, so I'm yeah, there was a lot of cheering. It was a spectator sport. It cranked a little hard. And <laughs> so... We, we just had a little fun with it, and I end up taking out the behemoth. And Gatsby has a bit of focus on him at the moment. Uh, I decided to attack another time just to see if I can do a little bit more damage um, and see if I can take out his attachment there or his leader there. So I go to swing. I believe I hit. I can't remember if I do any damage to that model, unfortunately, at this moment. Um, but I do go with the other uh, Annihilation servers, and they just miss. So they didn't do, end up doing anything. I decided to try to get my Conservator in into the other zone and see if I can just contest and get in the way. Uh, so I'm just trying to figure out exactly where he wants to go. Uh, he ends up just running to get in the way of some of the models that can charge my caster. Uh, and that will be my turn. All right, so we've got seven minutes on the clock to start Kator's turn four, and it is go time. I have a lot to do, and I do not have enough time to do it in. So what are our goals? We want to clear the center zone. By the way, last turn I did score that center zone with that unit of mechanics. Wow. Um, so I think we start this turn, and I have uh, three control points to your zero. And the whole goal this turn is to clear the center zone and score it again with mechanics. We're going to clear that top zone right now with a Tannis and a Standard Bearer. That hand cannon come into play again, real clutch. And if at all possible, once that's clear, we're going to run that Marauder back into place and just pick up that control point. And if we're very, very lucky, we can get some demo core charges here and scrap that last jack. I did recast a uh, hand of fate onto the demo core here. Um, but I can, I think I didn't even remember rolling the dice. I was under such clock pressure. What I was looking at was like, if I don't score out this turn, if I don't get at least five tier zero in control points, I don't know that I have enough time to manage the remaining three turns of this game, um, and still beat you. So I was under, um, I was really feeling the clock pressure here, but 
Um, we end up killing some of the guys over here with these uh, Kiazi eliminators, and then the unit of shock troopers is going to take out the objective to score that control point first, and we're going to leave Gatsby till later. If we can pick him up, great, that's gravy, but, um, you know, because he's going to do a heck of a lot of damage if he's able to just activate uncontested, but... Um, the main goal is, again, points. So we didn't kill him. That's fine. Uh, we have points we can pick up in the center zone. We're going to move up the tanker, score the flag, shoot the jack. We move the other tanker. It has dual attack. We bulldoze that servitor out of its way. We kill it with a, a melee attack, and then we shoot that jack with the uh, armor-piercing gun. And we're going to get uh, Democore into the corollary here. And we're also going to get uh, Democor into the Conservator. We stopped for a split second because uh, my opponent used a Watcher ability, uh, the Watcher spell on Lucant, to move over and take a shot at my uh, Democor as they went in. But it wasn't. I don't believe you were able to deal enough damage to dislodge any of them. Finally, after a couple more swings of the hammers, we're able to clear the Conservator off. And we just kind of follow up with the rest of our units to make sure that if I don't somehow win, I'm going to maintain a good scenario presence here. But after the dust settles, I realize, oh wait, I just got five control points. So we're good. Yep, because you were at two you were at two nothing on the top of that turn, and then we were able to move uh move right on in. Uh, that was a really fun game to watch. Uh, thank you both so much for filming our first battle report at the store. Uh, sorry for kind of like, grabbing you guys in the uh, in the moment. I was like, oh, Convergence, yes. And Dan, yes. Um, so I appreciate it. <laughs> and I hope our, our, our viewers had fun with this, uh, with this episode. So yeah, can you guys just, um, you know, discuss a little bit of what happened in the, in the battle rep? Sure. I'm happy to be a... Uh a meat popsicle present and accounted for at the store at the time this game. Same played. here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Vlad two is one of my favorite casters, uh, day after day, game after game, pound after pound. He always delivers for me. I've had so many games end where Vlad is just the last miniature standing for no good reason. Um, I keep him alive. I keep him in the game. And, uh, the majority of the time, the game plan with Vlad is to just, use that flexibility of the feet to deliver the miniatures that I need precisely where I need them to manage that output um, and the accuracy as much as possible and to boost with arcane might from Vlad's own stack of focus, uh, boosting the attacks and damage of his warrior models as much as possible. And really, you want to just uh, grab the real estate and then protect it as much as possible. So you're going to form a line, and you're going to keep your opponent out, and then anything that they use to unjam themselves, you're going to take that away from them too. Um, I am just in my comfort zone playing Vlad, and I love the Man of War models that Private Press has put out. The tanker solos um, are some of my favorite looking miniatures, and I really busted my butt painting those guys. I still have to polish off the paint job on my Dracoons, but now that they've been reduced to eight points instead of nine points, I really think that they're in a great spot to slot into this list. Um, at least one of those Drakens, both of those Drakens at this point, um, they're slotting in to replace what I used to run the, uh, the battle engine, uh, the one with the gun that slams, the siege battle engine. But um, I am trying this new iteration, and I'm excited with the way that it's performed, and I am looking to get some more games in with this in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yep. So I was bringing out uh, Lucant today because I wanted to test him out for a steamroller that we were having. Usually I would run him with the medium infantry so I could use the shield wall, plus his feet just makes it very hard to get through. Uh, but there's been a lot of RFP and soul denial in the last couple of years, uh, especially in the beginning of Mark III. So I just wanted to see what he could do without the actual... Uh, medium infantry in in his list my list isn't i didn't think is optimized but it really wants to go first and going second and then having his advanced deploy really shut me down in the game and i just wasn't able to get out the out of the jam i had gotten myself into uh father lucan i love them i love the model i love his spell list but he, I just always feel very slow when I have him because he has no, no threat extenders on, 
on his list. Uh, so it was just a little bit difficult for me to get up the board with him. I have actually changed the list um, since that game in order to put it into the other theme that Convergence has. Uh, losing James but gaining a couple other models so that way I can get the shield guard from the actual servitors as well as my my warjax. I did note that I um I should have watchered when he went in with the marauder against my my prime axiom uh because it was within 6 inches and I hadn't used watcher yet and it was just a forgot to do it in that turn which could have at least crippled a little bit of the the uh the marauder and might have helped keep the prime axiom alive that turn which cost me a lot of points in in the end so so thank you for watching yeah thanks again for uh being on the channel uh hope to see you again uh hoy love seeing convergence on the table i don't have a lot of um table time with that faction so i'm always really excited whenever you bring them to the store so thank you Dan, I, yeah, Dan, I see Kator, Kator, I own Kator, I see him all the time, so, but no, <laughs> you know, love, have, love having you on the, uh, on the channel, too. If there's nothing, if there's one thing that the uh, world doesn't lack for, it's more Kator, more conscripts. That's true. So, um, Hoy, great game, and I'll be looking for that rematch anytime. Yeah, it'll be fun, and I do have my Aurora 2 list, too, which is a lot of fun to, to put on the table. Thank you for watching. If you would like to check out some additional content, including original video and audio of our battle reports to support the channel, please click our Patreon link in the video description below. If there are any factions, warcasters, or warlocks you would like to see on the channel, please let us know in the comments. And as always, see you on the next tried and true battle report.